Hi, my name is Sohini Alam. I'm a British Bangladeshi singer and I come from a family of musicians who were originally from Bangladesh. When my mother moved to the UK, she started teaching Bengali music in London. So I have been learning music pretty much my whole life. I sing not just in Bengali, but in several other languages, because this is London and you get to meet musicians from all over the place. So I'm also in several different bands. My own band is called Kiel, and we make what we call Bengali music with the London sound. I work with a lot of musicians from the UK, and we uh, come up with different ways of presenting music from Bangladesh and from West Bengal, uh, using many different kinds of instruments, including guitars, a piano, tabla, double bass, and violin, as examples. I'm also in a band called Lokitara, which is a band run by another British Bangladeshi musician called Kishon Khan. And in Lokitara, we mix Afro-Cuban and Bengali music to create our own sound. Uh, besides this, I am in a, an international collaboration called GIRL, that's G-triple-R-L. And in GIRL, the musicians are from different parts of the world. So we have uh, a DJ from Venezuela, our producer is Brazilian, we have a dance hall artist from Brazil, uh, myself, a Ghanaian singer, and a Zimbabwean rapper. Besides the bands, I also run an arts company called Komola Collective, where we tell stories from females' perspectives. And I participate in several other kinds of projects as well. So I've done live and recorded singing for a lot of dance programs, including Akram Khan's Desh and Until the Lions, as well as other kinds of shows as, and, and other kinds of performances on stage, TV and film. The latest thing that I've been doing is making music for a documentary called Rising Silence, which I do with my Keo bandmate Oliver Weeks. And as a musician, because I'm in London, I get to work with people from all over the world because you can be British Bangladeshi, you can be British Cuban, you can be um, so many things and be British as well. So it's a really amazing place to make music with people from all over and still have your own sound. We've performed in all sorts of places from very small venues, even in the basement of a pub, all the way to huge venues. Um, so whether it's Purcell Room on the South Bank or uh, Walmart Festival or Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club, there's many different kinds of venues. So everything from the tiniest venues to the larger venues. Um, in terms of when I perform, when I'm in the smaller venues, obviously I usually have fewer band members. So even with my own band, which is normally six people, We've done versions where only two of us have performed acoustically, just voice and guitar. And then we've had versions where we had the whole band and a string quartet as well at Dara Theatre. So all kinds of venues, London being so diverse, there are a lot of places where we can perform. Oh my goodness, that's a hard one. I don't have one favorite venue, but I have to say just on a personal level, I like the small intimate gigs. Um, a lot of people love the big stadium kind of thing. And that's fun in its way, but I, I, like, I like the small gigs where you can see your audience and interact with them. My family are musicians. So when the time came and I was a teenager, I rebelled against my family and got an office job after graduating. Um, for most people, it's the other way around. They're teenagers and, and they want to rebel and they start a band and that kind of thing. But in my case, I started an office job and I would do gigs in the evenings and rehearsals in the, on the weekends as well um, during the daytime. And it got to the point where I had used up all of my holidays in half a year. And then I got offered another gig. I got offered a tour and it wasn't a choice. It, it, I knew that I was going to do the tour. So unless you're in a place where you know that this is it and you're willing to put up with all the hardships that come with being a musician, which can sometimes involve um, 
not making enough money or not getting enough recognition. Um, as long as you're at peace with the possibility that those things may come or may not come, then it's great, do it. But unless you have that in you, you might want to think about taking it up as a career, whether or not you want to do that.